All right, guys, back to work tonight. Wednesday's behind us. Hope you guys made some money out there. But it's back to work tonight. Got Thursday right around the corner. Got some great trades setting up for tomorrow. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video to make sure you get a game plan to make some money tomorrow. As always, before we jump in and get this party going, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video upload. And if you guys enjoy the video tonight, do me a favor. Will you hit that like button? I appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro, right? Thursday's not going to trade itself let's get ready for thursday where are the best trades setting up for thursday's trading session well i'll tell you boy the bears got that beautiful bull trap on the nasdaq and the s p the bears had all that momentum going lower but they failed to get that breakout off that low and now we have this beautiful opportunity right now for the buyers to take advantage of the, the bears struggling with that bear breakout got a great chance for a nice little short squeeze going higher here on the nasdaq and the s p but i'll tell you right now when you see the charts here tonight we have a lot of key resistance zones up overhead so we've really got to pick our spots very carefully tomorrow on the long side and then once we get up in those areas there's a lot of ways we can short this thing back down again so buyers have a fantastic opportunity right now on the nasdaq and the s p for a short squeeze we'll talk about how to pick our battles how to pick our spots wisely and i really think the key to making money on the nasdaq and the S&P tomorrow will be trapping in traders using stops as fuel. You know, for example, right, we still have potential for that breakout going lower. But when you see the charts tonight, there's a lot of levels down here where you can easily trap in some of those bears for some squeezes going back higher. So the idea for tomorrow, the NASDAQ and the S&P are running stops, trapping in traders, because you're going to see tonight these charts are, are not very forgiving. There's a lot of potential traps on these charts, and I'm going to make sure you guys have a game plan to make some money on those traps, right? So you're the one doing the trappers. And of course, over on the oil here tonight, oil was range bound most of the day today. We have that long-term bear bias on oil with a strong pop up here. I'll tell you, it is not easy right now to find a short on oil here. I've got some, I got a couple key trend lines, a couple key levels overhead. And again, same thing on the oil. We have, we have opportunities on the buy side and the sell side. The, the secret to making money tomorrow, from what I know right now, is trapping in traders, running stops. And we'll talk about how to use stops to fuel those profit targets here tonight on the video. Now, tomorrow is Thursday. Let's make sure we double check the schedule for tomorrow before we go into each of these charts here for tonight. There is no real major earnings for tomorrow, so we can have a bit of a break from the earnings schedule we've been talking about this week. The only two news events you really got to keep in mind tomorrow are right there. The Philly Fed number at 8.30 and the existing home sales number at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Those are definitely going to be the two big news events that we're watching for tomorrow. If I had to guess which one of these events would be the most tradable part of the session tomorrow, I would definitely guess that 10 o'clock we see a lot of great moves in our trade room and that 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock block of time. So if I had to guess tomorrow, if you could only be at your desk tomorrow for an hour, that 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock block after that home sales number comes out will likely be the easiest consistent price action to make some money. But obviously, right, we're going to find some trades here throughout the entire uh, session tomorrow. So Philly Fed at 830, home sales at 10. And again, as I mentioned earlier on this week, we are going to get a knee deep right now in earnings season. We don't have much for tomorrow, and we really don't have much for the rest of this week. So we'll come back, of course, next week, and we'll talk more about earnings because next week is really where some of the bigger players, the big tech companies, the big energy companies, right? They're going to start reporting next week, and that's when things that's when things really get fun. Now, back to our charts here. We know we have two news events. Remember, news is a good catalyst, but we actually trade off the chart. Where The chart is what tells us where to find the entries and the exits. Now, whether you trade one of these markets or you trade all of them, like we do in our trade room, make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video tonight, guys, because you will learn something new throughout the entire video lesson. And you know me, I try to save the best stuff all the way towards the end, so I'll give you a reason to watch all the way to the finish. So take some notes, grab some screenshots. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comment section. Let's go NASDAQ. 
We'll go S and P, and we'll wrap things up here on on the uh, oil futures here for tonight. Now, real quickly here, upper left hand corner. These will all be tick charts here tonight. I will always these will always be tick charts uh, on this video. So be aware of the time frame in the upper left hand corner. And also too, this is the Nasdaq or the QQQs. You can pretty much apply the Nasdaq to the S and P and the Spy and the Spy to the Nasdaq. They're very very interchangeable. So I'll do my best not to repeat myself too much, but they are very similar, right? So whatever I talk about the NASDAQ can be applied to the S&P and vice versa. Back to our key insights, though. There are really three key insights right now that are tipping us off to where the best opportunities are going to be tomorrow. The first one, of course, is the bear bias. Look at a four-hour chart. Look at a daily chart right now. And even though I mentioned last night on the video, the bulls do have a potential opportunity to grab the medium-term control right now. They still have not been able to do it. We saw that bull trap as we talked about in last night's video. So bear bias, I will basically, as the market rises higher, I have to be looking for right shorts going back down again. So the bear bias is definitely a big part of this. The second key insight is that strong move down. This might be one of the most important clues we have on this chart here right now. And it's one of the big differences between the NASDAQ and the S&P tonight, you'll notice there was that very strong move down after that bull trap we talked about in last night's video. Anytime we see a strong move, we know one thing pretty much for certain. We're likely going to get a two-legged pullback and a retest of that level. Now, once they retest that level, now it's all... Uh, it, it's basically give me some more information, right? Now, where do we go next? Do we see a breakout going lower? Right, And this is why I said earlier, obviously, the breakout failed. There's been no breakout going lower. So if they can't break out going lower, then where do they go next? Then they want to gravitate and rotate back up to that highest point of that deep pullback, which you can see is up at two, you know, 284 half, very similar here on the S&P. So unless the bears, unless the bears are sleeping on us right now, unless the bears can get a nice strong breakout going lower, and I, and I will talk about, I have like five different breakout patterns or breakout scenarios I'm watching for tomorrow. So I will definitely be talking about those bear breakouts going lower. But unless the bears are hibernating right now, this thing's going to want to go back up and retest this high. Now, I would imagine there'll be a lot of bears up there, right? But then we have this big, big challenge. We have this trend line coming up. And this is why I said earlier, when you see these charts tonight, you will see these are not very forgiving charts here tonight. There's a lot of traps. You really got to pick your spots wisely. So with this trend line coming off the low now, you would think here, right? You would think, oh, this will be easy. The bears aren't going to want to sell right here. The market should make a run going higher. We can buy up here, right? Well, not so fast. Look a bit wider now. And remember where we are now. We're now right back at this. Remember this big range we talked about in last night's video, look where we are, right? We're rotating off that low right now. This is the third clue, right? Rotating off that low. So this is why I said earlier, think about traps. Think about more bull traps up there. Now, as you can imagine, there is a small window. There's a relatively small window up there where we definitely can pick some scalps on the way higher. But you have to be thinking, unless these buyers can run this up and hold this breakout, which is possible, right? Unless they can run this up and and hold us for a breakout going higher, you got to be thinking there'll be a relatively small window here to be a buyer, a better chance of being a seller back down into that big trading range. So I got a bunch of ways to make money out here going higher, a bunch of ways to make some money going lower. And of course, we'll talk about those breakouts right as we go. So as you can see, right, this is, these are every once in a while, these markets, they kind of back themselves into a corner. And this is, this is definitely one of those days where uh, uh, you can definitely see this not this is not a very forgiving uh, marketplace right now. So we should be rotating higher, right? We should be rotating higher. What do you think is the easiest way to make money as we go higher? Well, first of all, as I mentioned, this trend line, that trend line right there is a well, it can be a big headache for the bears right now. The only way, because I think it, in, in normal conditions, I would say this is a great spot for a short, right? Because they'll rotate off that low, back down we go again. It should be easy, right? Not so much, though, with that trend line. The key to this now is going to be we're going to have to go up. We'll have to fend off the buyers because, again, you would think the buyers will probably attack in this area because that trend line, fend off those buyers, and we're going to have to get here somehow underneath that trend line 
and use that trend line for the entry. It may not be easy, just, 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 to be, just to be aware of that. Now, as we talked about in last night's video, a lot of times these rising trend lines, what they'll do is, is they'll bounce off them once, they'll go lower, don't chase it, they'll come back up, and they'll be like this, almost like a hidden channel, right? It'll come off that low, off that high, right? You can oftentimes combine, see that draw off that low, and then find that short, right off the off the high of that channel or we oftentimes see stuff like this where it may bounce off that trend line and then run lower and then it runs lower like this remember we talked about this last night you want that trap right the trap entry will always be your best friend whenever you're worried about basically selling too low right at this point we're selling very close to that low of day well no, not to the low of day right that low of that range there and so we will look for that trap so we either need to get that thing underneath and up right off that kind of channel i mentioned earlier or grab that trap and of course the bears want to get where right they want to get down to retest that low now once we get down to those lows there's a lot more ways to make money down there. I can trade reversals off of that low. I can trade breakouts going lower. So I'm going to talk about the move going lower here in a moment. So if you want to look for ways to make money that way, make sure you keep on watching this video here tonight. Okay, the big the big $1,000 question is how do we make money on the short squeeze going higher? There are probably two ways to make money on the short squeeze going higher. The one way to do it will be what we call a two-tried breakout. Okay, these are pretty important, so make sure you pay attention. Strong move up, shallow pullback will drive the buyers crazy, right? The shallow pullback creates FOMO, the higher high in price. The higher high in price is critical because you don't want a lower high that'll signal that move back down into that range. Strong move, shallow pullback, that kicks the FOMO into gear, higher high in price. This will probably want be one of the safest bets, right, for that entry right there. And keep in mind, right, it'll be a trap. Why? Because you want to be buying as low as you can here because, again, we've got all that resistance up overhead. We, we talk a lot about traps, as you guys know, in the free classes, right, the free course on the website. We talk about traps. And, again, that trend line right there is going to be a good deterrent to keep the bears away. Another way to make some money on this going higher is – is my favorite dance move, your, yours and my favorite dance move, the pop and grind, right? Let's say it pops up and the bears can't come in and short it, but now the bears walk away like they probably should here and the market begins to grind going higher. The pop and grind move like these are very, very reliable. I can draw a trend line off the high. I can mark a channel off the low. And, and as I always say, go in and look left, find some prior swings, I always tell my students, look for that channel and look for that pullback right below a prior swing. What that will do is, is that will get you underneath the moving average. And once you're below a prior swing, that's where traps live, right? Traps below prior swings. Then we get underneath, this is the 21 moving average, under the 21 EMA, get those bears to commit. Once those bears are to short this thing now, remember, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, they're gonna wanna retest that high. Think about now where those bears have their stops, right? And buy right into those stop losses for that retest of that high. Oftentimes, these will go trap, failure, pullback, right? And then remember, good targets up top here, right? 431 and three quarters. You'll see something similar on the S&P and the SPY. And if you really want to nail down that final target, don't forget, it's the first leg, and the third leg, right? First leg and third leg, that will give you some more. So I think this is one of my favorite ways to really thread the needle as we're going higher here. Traps, failures, pullback entries off the low of that pop and grind channel. These are the same entry patterns you guys have learned in the free trading course, which which reminds me, of course, if you're if you're here for the first time, if you haven't taken the free classes yet, if you're one of the few folks who haven't learned how to find the channels properly, how to find the entries properly, what I'll do is I'll put a link up here for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link, take our free classes, learn that strategy because that strategy will help you find so many more easy winners. It'll give you an easy way to know which trades are more likely to be losses. And most importantly, it'll give you a roadmap to follow, which which for me gives me a lot more confidence and consistency in my trading by having a simple roadmap. So um, if you're missing too many winning trades right now, if you're taking too many losses, if you're not getting the results you want out of your trading, grab that free course. It is perfect for someone who is serious about making a full
full-time career out of the wonderful business of day trading. So grab that link up there and don't miss that free course. You're going to love it. And let me know what you think. I would love to see some screenshots because you guys are always so inspiring. Send me screenshots. You guys make your money with that free course. Now, the next question is, is as we go higher, right? As we go higher here, how do we short this thing? Okay, that's a very, very good question. And it's a, it's a good one, right? Because again, we get that big range that we talked about in last night's video and of course touched on again here today. Remember, whenever we see a real strong move higher, we have to anticipate what? We have to anticipate a pullback and a retest. That's why I said there probably is going to be some money to make up here, right? There will be some money to make up there if we can get that nice strong run higher. Now, there's, there's, there's three different scenarios that I want you to keep in mind for the short off the high here. The first one is the crown reversal. We go up. Big, strong move going higher. We're up into major areas of resistance, the top of that pretty much the weekly range right now. All that momentum says, give the buyers the benefit of the doubt. Let them try once, let them try twice. This is what I call a crown reversal. It's basically a two try for the buyers. Why two tries? Because we're so bullish with the short-term momentum. And then, of course, the trap the reason why you want a trap entry on this is because but until we retest that high, you have to anticipate because a lot of times what happens is, is this happens. It'll pull back a little bit lower and then go higher. Remember, it's going to want to retest that high. So if you try, so if you try selling down here, you're walking right into a into a bear trap. Okay, that's a very big that's a very big no no when it comes to picking in this case picking a top on this market. That's why you need that trap entry. By the time the bears get back in down here, you're already cashing a big paycheck, right? You get your first two targets off. You're holding that runner down here. So by getting that trap, you're able to sidestep a lot of very easy losses. This this technique I learned, you can guess how I learned that technique, by, by stumbling through the stuff, trial and error over the last almost 15 years of doing this. That crown reversal will keep you out of big time trouble when you're trying to pick a top in a real strong market. Now, at the same time, let's say the market runs up, right? Let's say the buyers now come in and they do retest the high, right? So they get that strong run higher. We expect them to retest the high. They do, right? They pull back, they retest. As we always say, what? Mission accomplished, right? Mission accomplished. Now, once they retest, remember, like, like back here, right? The bears take it lower, they retest. Now what? We expect that market to spring back in the opposite direction. Same thing here. Now, remember, at this point, even though even though we're near the top of this trading range, we still have a lot of what? A lot of bullish momentum. And so I, I got to be careful just simply trying to sell right now because for all I know, it might keep going, right? It might keep going. And you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll die a death of a thousand cuts trying to pick those tops like that. So we need some sort of catalyst, right? We need something that gives us that little bit of an edge to knock this thing back down again. And like I mentioned earlier, the edge is running stops. Think about now, the bigger money, the smart money, they're buying low. Now the weak hands come in, right? They try once, they try twice. Notice how this is a lower low in price, right? We go up, buyers once, buyers twice, right? See, that's a lower low. Why lower low? Because buyers, they want to buy low, right? Once those buyers now have tried twice and they fail, all the stops get hit and the market makes a strong run down. That right there is exactly what you want to see right here, right? Now, this is where the fun begins, right? Because now, as those buyers now get trapped in, we get that nice strong signal closing below the moving average. You'll learn more about that in the free course, and then we get the drop. Once the market drops now, now, now that momentum begins to turn in our favor. We know that range is a magnet. We know we have that bigger range, which if you watched last night's video, we should be rotating back and forth, right? So we now know, you know roughly where this market now wants to go. Now it's all about finding an entry. Mark off that high, sorry, mark off the low, <laughs> mark off that high, and again, look left, find some prior swings, and you're going to grab any of the entry patterns I teach 
in that free course, right? It could be a bull trap, great, great spot for a bull trap. Could be a buyer failure above the moving average. Could be a pullback combo, a strength move going lower. And we know where the market wants to go at that point, okay? That's the second scenario, a little bit uh, delayed of the entry, but again, for good reason, right? Because of the bullishness that we have right there. I love those double top reversals. We do a lot of that in our trade room. Next up here, the third one to sell off the high is the V top, right? The V top is... is well, this is what it looks like. It runs up, and now the bears come in, and they just crush it, right? They run it right back down again. And it's very tempting to want to sell it as it's going lower. But here's what you want to do. As you run higher, what's going to happen is it'll pop and begin to grind down like that. When it grinds down like this, the key is, remember, sellers, we want to sell high. We don't chase it. We mark a trend line off that low. We find a channel off that high. And you can probably already, you, you probably already finished my sentence right now. Grab that first test and sell off that high. I'm obviously simplifying this right now for this video's sake. But again, this will be a trap, a failure, any of the entry patterns that qualify. And remember, I provide all the rules all the worksheets, everything you'll do to trade this stuff along with me and provide it as a student of mine for our trade room. The trade room, of course, or the, the, the market wants to go back down into that range. You can really see it, and this is this is a little difficult. It's a 4,000 tick chart right now. But you can see back in the NASDAQ, right? They pop it up and they run, and I, and I realize it's a bit of a slow time frame, but they grind it down, right? When they grind it down like that, pop that trend line down, up around that high, find that prior swing, and that gives you a very easy visual for where you want to get that short going. It's almost the same thing over here, okay? So keep that in mind as we go higher. Then, breakouts, right? This is where things, this is probably the least likely, the most difficult part about this tomorrow is, is let's say now, for example, let's say we do make that run up, right? Let's say we do get that pullback, they hold the pullback, and they don't get a double top reversal back down, and they blast, right? They really blast running out. I've got, I, I have a number of breakout patterns I'm going to talk about, but I'm getting a little bit late in this video right now. So let's talk about the breakout patterns in a moment on the S&P, right? Because I can apply the same breakout patterns going higher, I can apply them going lower as well. Now, where does the NASDAQ want to go? It's going to want to get up into that trading range. The real big target and this has not changed, guys. If you've watched these videos the last week or so, that 729 and three quarter level, look at the daily chart right now. It's a beautiful trap high on a daily chart. That 729 and three quarters, that's where the buyers ultimately want to go. That range up there, 11,600, that's a pretty big ask for tomorrow, right? It's a pretty big ask, but that's where they're trying to go if things do go crazy here. Now, Wrapping things up here, what if we go lower? Can I buy off that low? Absolutely. Can I sell that breakout? Yes, I can. Let's talk about that on the S&P. The S&P is obviously very similar here to the NASDAQ. So on the E-mini or the SPY, right, or the or the micro E-mini, got a lot of students right now trading the micros with me in the trade room. I really love those micro contracts, by the way. They really make it so much easier than when I was learning this stuff. You know, it's so much easier with a micro contract than having to go only one contract on the E-mini S&P. Anyways, same basic idea here on the on the E-mini, right? We've got a bear bias overall, which means as the market goes higher, I have to be thinking about the bears back down again, right? We also got a strong move down. Now, look at this chart, okay? This is one kind of key difference here between the S&P and the NASDAQ. You'll notice that the S&P made that strong run down. They got their retest of that low, Right, but look what happened. They actually broke down pretty good, and you got to think that is a strong enough move. You know, look at this way. That leg right there. See how they separate off the moving average. Whenever they separate away from the 21 moving average, that's when you know you've got a good strong move. Like, see right here. There's no separation right there. Right? There's no separation. The buyers are the buyers are not in control yet. Right? They're not jumping off that moving average. See how they're jumping away from that moving average right there? That's a strong move. Okay, I always tell my students, anytime we pop and separate off that moving average, that is kind of my definition of a strong move. You don't need a lot of indicators for this stuff. Learn to use a 21 EMA. Learn to read charts the right way. And you really don't need a lot of extra stuff on this chart. That's why I don't have many, many extra indicators on this chart right now. Strong move down. What do they want to do? They're going to want to retest that low. Now, can you see this crown reversal? Can you see how they go down, right? There's kind of one try, there's two tries. Can you see that? I, I, I know it's different direction. I talked about this before, right? Up one, 
to trap, right? Remember that? That's the same basic idea right there. So buyers have a primo opportunity for that because that range, of course, above them is a magnet. Now, speaking of the range here, right? The range, of course, is another key component on this because just like on the NASDAQ, we've got this really big range here right now. And you could easily say, well, that's a, a you know symmetrical move above, go below. The market, like I mentioned last night, is going to want to rotate back and forth here. So this, this really, again, it's very much like the NASDAQ here, where as you go higher, you're, you're right up around the top of that bigger range and you would think, oh, this is great, right? We'll, we'll just, we'll sell back here. But the, 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 the trend line, right? This trend line makes it very difficult as we go higher to sell it back down. You've got to get underneath it, right? And go from there, which again, gives the buyers this beautiful chance for a squeeze. And again, pick your spots, right? Pick your spots wisely here with that pop and grind or that two try trap. And then don't say it didn't warn you as we go higher, that one, two back down again into that trading range. And again, if the S&P wants to really break out, they have to get that strong breakout going above these areas here. And the next target overhead here for the buyers, and again, this has not changed, is at 38.20, right? 38.20 is that big daily chart trap high up there. Okay, so just to, reca just to recap on the S&P, the big question now is as we go lower, right? As we go lower, how do we make some money as the market goes lower? The, the most aggressive of the entries right now is going to be that crown reversal. That strong move down says what? They're going to want to retest, Okay. Now, with that retest, I've got the bears. Now, keep in mind, I'm I'm kind of uh, uh, simplifying this right now. The ideal the ideal trap entry right now for the bulls would be getting below that low right there. I would be very surprised though if they got as far down as that and still was able to hold this. That's why I'm using this level right here at 36, 90 and a half. That's just a little by almost 15 years of experience talking right there. So right here, right, think about bears once, right? Obviously, bears have now tried once, twice, three times, four times. What I want you to pay attention to, though, is if you want to be a buyer before we retest that low, they have to get a trap below that low, right? So the buyers right now would love to get underneath that low. The key on this one will be getting that nice, strong signal, right? That'll be the key. That's always the key to a trap. When it comes to trap entries, and you'll, you'll learn more about this stuff in that free course I mentioned earlier, but one of the most important factors in a trap is, 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 the, is the location of the signal, right? It needs to go fast, you know, quick, right? So if it keeps on going lower, that's definitely not a trap, right? So, so quick signal, strong signal candle, it's going to be very obvious that everybody wants that trade going along here. That would be a very good, that, that's a very good pattern set up off of that low, right? That crown reversal in the opposite direction that we talked before. Or we go back, retest that low. This is a no-brainer in my in my eyes, right? This 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 long off the low now is a is a is a no-brainer because you got that big trading range, right? You get that retest of that low. Once they accomplish that mission, once they retest that low here, and we we you know there 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 are certain reversals that just make a lot of sense. This one makes a lot of sense here. As we go lower here now, right? Take out that low, trap in those bears. Like I said, right? The goal for tomorrow, the real secret to money tomorrow is is using stops as fuel. Let those weekends come in. Let them try to sell. And when they do, think about where their pain is, right? Think about where those bears are yelling uncle, right? They're waving the white flag, right? They're saying, I'm out, I'm out, I'm done, right? And once those bears get trapped, they see that nice, strong, juicy signal candle, they're going to get the heck out of that position. And then it'll give you a nice run going higher. Now, remember, after you get those double bottom reversals, you can also then look for that new channel. Now, real quickly here, it's very important if you want to buy the follow-up trade on this, it's very important that that pop off the low goes really strong, right? So we want to see a nice strong follow-through, right? Nice strong follow-through off that reversal, off of that low. Nice strong pop up. Anytime we see a strong move, we expect to pull back and a retest. So we mark off that high. We mark off that low. And you guys probably hear this in your sleep, right? Right? Traps, baby, off of that low. Find that prior swing and get that first test off of that low. Now, where does the market want to go at that point? You know this. You know the answer. Where does the market want to go at that point? It wants to rotate back and take out the other side of that trading range, right? Stay patient. Leave those runners. That'll be a nice good paycheck for you to grab that reversal off of that low. The next thing is, right? The next thing is, is trading a breakout. 
right? How do we try to break out here going lower? Well, first of all, before you go do any breakouts, you want to make sure, do we have enough space? We have a football field size space below us right now. There is a huge amount of space, both in the S&P and the NASDAQ. So if bears can do their job tomorrow, there's a lot of payoff potential as we go. Now, I talked about five different breakouts going lower. One of them is a failed breakout. One, two, back up, right? That's the first potential breakout. The first thing in my mind is always a failed breakout. The second one here is a one, two, three breakout. These are very, very simple, right? So we, we take a low out, we hold the pull back off the moving average, and we jump. Now, remember, when we jump, we want to see a very strong jump off that moving average, okay? I'm not talking about that right there. Remember, there will be a lot of times where you'll see a range breakout, they'll struggle, they'll fail, and they'll pop right back in that range, okay? We're not taking that first pullback. I am not taking that first pullback, right? But I love the follow-up trade. The follow-up trade off that low channel, mark channel high, the follow-up trade here is a very high percentage trade at that point because now the, bear, the bears are back in control. It's a firm breakout. Remember, first leg, third leg, right? That'll give you an idea of where to uh, to finalize that target, right? Does that make sense, right? So one, two, blast going lower. Don't chase it. Find that channel, mark that high, grab a trap, that failure, that pullback, right? Again, all the pattern lessons talk about in that free course. The next one, of course, is that pop and grind, right? The pop down, we grind down, right? There's a, there's a million reasons why this could happen tomorrow. One, two, three, we pop and we grind. Once you see this thing pop lower and begin to grind down, it, the grinder is usually a dead giveaway that for whatever reason, the buyers who would normally be waiting down here, they're not here anymore, okay? That grind is oftentimes the buyers who have their stop losses down here, right? They're trying to buy, they're buying off that low. Once they see the pop down, they walk away and that's what leads to that grind. That's why I said the grind is a very, very, uh, it's, a, it's a very good uh, a clue here for us. Once we see that strong pop down, that grind going lower, we pretty much now know how to find that channel. We know how to find those traps. We know that when we get above the moving average with a strong run lower that wants to be retested. Once those buyers come in and try to get long, we can sell right into those stop losses. Think about stops, right? Run those stops for fuel. Take some profit off at that low. Leave a runner. Where? Where's the best runner? First leg, third leg, right? That'll give you an idea of how to, how, to, how to really prime that final target to squeeze out the last bit of profit there. And then one more here, one more would be it would be a, a, a two try breakout, right? So, you know, let's say for example, we, we, we make, a, make a real strong run lower here, right? Strong run lower, shallow pullback, lower low in price. These are pretty common, right? They're pretty good winners. They're usually pretty, pr pr pretty, you know, pretty uh, reliable trades there. If it does make that strong run down, that shallow pullback and that lower low in price, remember lower low, right? Not higher low. Okay, higher lows are going to mess you up, right? Strong move, the shallow pullback is what does it, right? That gives you the FOMO. That lower low in price makes sure it's not a reversal back up again, right? So be aware of that. That trap will be a good one there as well. And as always, right, with any breakout, with any breakout, this could be bullish or bearish, right? All of these breakouts I'm talking about right now, with any breakout, if we see a big gap up or a big gap down tomorrow, if we see a big, big, huge move down, what do you do? We find a bigger channel. We wait for a deeper pullback, right? How deep? Deep enough, deep enough to the point where you're back above that moving average. You want to trap in those buyers who think this now is a reversal. And then once those buyers come in, we can, we can trap them in, right? And, and sell back down. The key though is if we were to see like a gap down overnight, right? Not on the SPY or the QQQs, but on the S&P or the NASDAQ where gaps aren't as common, right? Big gap down overnight. The market simply just bleeds lower overnight. It's a huge move down or a huge move up, right? Again, this could also work going higher as well. But if we see a really, really, really big move overnight, I'll go out, find a bigger channel. I'll wait for a deeper pullback. And as I always say, right when that little voice in your head says, maybe it's a reversal, right? Right when that voice in your head says, oh my goodness, maybe I should be buying, that's usually where it's time. Look for that failure and run it back to retest that low. All right, guys, those are some, those are, those are some, some breakouts I'll be watching here for tomorrow. But again, the key right now though is, again, the key right now is, think about this big trading range, right? 
buy low, sell high, take those failures, reversals, and again, run those stops, right? Run those stops. And if you don't know what a good stop run looks like, come out and join me in the trade room, take the free courses. You'll see a lot of examples of what stop runs. Uh, we really do a lot of stop running every day in our trade room. Back to our charts, though, the oil. Oil, of course, is a little bullish right now, right? There are there are four key insights right now. Now, we do have a overall bear bias right now. Now, it's funny because last night on the video, I talked about the fact that I've been giving the bulls the benefit of the doubt for a while because we had that big run up in early October. And so we still have that big, massive bull spike in early October, and it's going to want to be retested eventually here, I would assume. But the bulls just, this is the first we've seen the bulls showing any bit of life right now. So, you know, we'll see if they can hold this or not. Right now, I'll, st I'll stick with the bear bias here overall. But again, if you've been watching these videos the last week or so, look back at a four-hour chart, and you'll see that big spike up early October. Anytime we see a strong move, we know the we know there's a good chance they want to retest the high. So I'm I'm still bearish right now, but I'm on I'm on eggshells here right now. This could easily turn bullish in in in, in a heartbeat. Really, next one here, strong move higher. Right. Anytime we see a strong move, what we expect a retest of that high, then what? A, a sh possibly either a breakout going higher, right, or a short going lower. Now that brings us into a big problem, right? There's that trend line. That trend line coming up makes for a very difficult job to sell short. This is very similar to the S&P and the Nasdaq here. And then also too, if it breaks out higher, right? If it breaks out higher here, we're now right back up into overhead resistance. So the buyers have the buyers have the edge right now. The sellers have a hard time right now. That trend line, right? That big trend line coming off that low is not going to be, well, we'll talk about it here in a moment here. Next one, range below. That range below, of course, is a magnet, right? And so as we get that breakout going higher, if these buyers cannot hold this and if it reverses, they're going to want to go right back down into that trading range. Again, may not be easy for the short because that trend line, but that's what the buyer, that's what the bears are going to want to do. And of course, that support trend line I've talked about a couple times already. So you'll notice here right now, right? Range, first leg, second leg, third leg, right? Remember, first leg, third leg is used as the big objective here. Okay, where are the best trades here right now on the on the oil? I think my favorite trades right now for tomorrow are going to be getting that short back or not not taking it short, but getting that move back down and then trapping in some of the bears as I mentioned before, running stops and looking for a stop run back up to these highs here. That is probably my favorite trade for tomorrow. Or we've got to get this move going underneath that trend line and then back up. I'll tell you right now, though, that is a very difficult trade to take because you're not going to be in a very good risk-reward ratio spot right there around those lows there. So that's not my favorite trade here uh, for tomorrow. So as the market goes lower... I think the the buyers have the buyers have all the options right now. They really do. As we go lower here right now, uh, I think the best trade right now is 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 trying to again let's get some of those bears coming in, trying to sell short. Once those bears get short here, think of the stops, right? The stops are sitting right there now, right? We've got again that trend line is the is the key to this, right? That trend line is the key, and so trapping those bears, look for right, look for that failure into what I call a pullback combination. You'll learn more about this in the video classes, right? Back up to retest the high, okay? Target number one. And then of course, up into that 86, 18 area for that runner going higher here. If the market slips underneath it, again, like I said earlier, kind of getting that underbelly off that trend line will pretty much be the only way to sell short or we find ourselves back at the low of this range and this again is a great place to be a buyer, right? If we make our way all the way back down to that low somehow, this is exactly where a crown reversal comes in, right? Bears once, bears twice, grab that trap below that low, right? Before they retest. We, we, we've mentioned that a couple times already today. If they run it lower and then retest, we go with a one, two, right? The two try, one, two, buy now into stops going higher. We've talked about that a couple times already, right? So those are some good longs off of that low as well. If we go lower 
And the Bears can hold this, right? If they can hold it and break down, there is quite a bit of space down below us here. But as you can imagine, though, the Bears have to get this thing all the way back to that low. They have to hold that pullback off the 21, and they get to blast it, right? With like a one, two, three breakout, find the new channel going lower, right? Like that's going to require a, a lot of Bears down there to come in. Could easily happen. We got to wait for it, though. Right, got to wait for it here. As the market goes higher, what's the key to making money as we go higher? That's a good question. Because again, we've got that big top up overhead here. And you really would imagine, and you know, look at a four hour chart, look at a daily chart right now. I would imagine there'd be a lot of bears up there. So as we go higher here, I like the crown reversal, right? The crown reversal off that high. Right, that's one way to sh short the ties. Or we go up, they retest the high. Strong move wants to be retested. Trapping the buyers, one and two, back down. Find that new channel. Notice again, that trend line is now firmly out of the way, right? So now that trend line isn't affecting us as badly anymore. And now it can be a little more aggressive on those shorts, right? So kind of the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the issue here right now, the sell side is, we have to get high enough to avoid this trend line uh, but again, as we go higher, that momentum becomes very bullish. And so we have to really trap in some of those buyers up there, use their stops for fuel, right? Throw this thing back lower here. And then, of course, the much easier trade, right? The much easier trade here would be if this thing blasts, right? If it blasts. So, for example, right, we go up, pull back, and jump going higher, right? If we see a very, very strong move going higher here, we know the odds are pretty good. They're going to retest that high. We'll mark off that high. We'll find that channel low. We'll drill down to find our entry setups right off the low of that channel. You know, again, I realize we're going into resistance, but again, if it's a very strong move going higher, you got to anticipate that retest of the high, and then we can look for that reversal going back down once they retest, right? Once they retest, then we can go one, two, back down again. You can make money on both sides of these markets as long as you know how to read momentum, right? Strong momentum says, buy that pullback, get that retest. Once they get the retest, trap in those weekend buyers, use the stops as fuel, and run back in the opposite direction, right? Or it keeps on going which could easily be the case, right? Say it pops up and keeps grinding, right? Little short squeeze, mark off that high, mark off that low, find that channel, right? Grab that trap below that swing. Again, we've talked about this many times already, right? Trapping the bears below the 21. Grab that trap, that failure, that pullback. You'll see a lot of examples of these, right, inside that free trading course. And, and, and again, we have a pretty good idea at that point where the market wants to go, but think about first leg, third leg, right? That'll give you a good idea for that exit. All right. 88, 88, 72 is the next big objective there for the bulls. The buyers right now want to get up into that 86, 18. The bears have one thing on their mind. They want to go back down to retest the low. Buyers will come in and buy it back up if they don't see a breakout going lower. That trend line, that's the big issue we have for tomorrow. So now, Speaking of tomorrow, the game plan's ready. The game plan's ready. S&P, NASDAQ, oil, right? What's your favorite market, by the way? I would love to know which market you trade the most. Uh, hit me up in the comments section. I'd love to know how I can make these videos better. I'd love to know how you're using these videos to make money every day. And don't forget, if you're looking for a great place to come out and learn and trade along, uh, we have a daily trade room where I show everything, right? All my charts, my ideas, all the entries, all the exits. You'll see everything in the trade room. I'll put all the membership links. I'll put all the free course links. I'll put everything you need in the description of this YouTube video. So grab those links. Take the free course first. That's a great place to get started. And then, of course, I'll be here ready for you when you're done that free class to get ready to make some money with me in the trade room as a new student. The easiest way to get help is to always call the office or send us an email or use live chat on the website. You can always drop questions, of course, in the comment section below. I do check those a couple times a week right now. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, don't be afraid to share this stuff with other trading buddies of yours. We'll wrap things up here for now, though. Get a good night's sleep tonight. Busy day tomorrow. Hopefully, we can make some money off trapping traders and running some stops. Either way, we'll come back tomorrow and get ready for Friday in tomorrow night's video newsletter. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.